This is Dale Kerrigan. He might seem like an average kid, but his story is legendary. His family, the Kerrigans, live at 3 Highview Crescent, Coolaroo, right next to the airport. Daryl, Dale's dad, is so proud of the family home that he calls it his castle. The low-flying planes and giant power lines don't bother him at all. For Daryl, they're daily reminders of mankind's achievements. Daryl is a tow truck driver by trade, but he's also a brilliant handyman. He's made all kinds of nifty improvements to the home, like the extension out the back. Since that's a work in progress, he might build a patio in the meantime. Dinner time is sacred in the Kerrigan household. Sal regularly serves up restaurant-quality food, and Daryl never fails to compliment her. Those lovebirds. When Daryl met Sal at the Greyhound races years ago, it was love at first sight. Dale's older brother, Steve, is an apprentice mechanic, but he's also an expert bargain hunter. He's always buying cool stuff out of the trading post for the cheapest prices. Steve also likes inventing things, which is why Daryl calls him an ideas man. But it's no secret that Tracy is Daryl's favourite. As the only daughter in the family, she's always doing things that make Daryl proud. Tracy's the only person in the family with a tertiary qualification, a certificate in hairdressing from Sunshine TAFE. Daryl framed it and hung it on the wall of the pool room. That's where he keeps all his prized possessions. But the proudest day of all was Tracy's wedding. She married a great guy named Con Petropolis. He's an accountant and kickboxing fanatic. The Kerrigans have had a lot of top nights, but that night was the most top. Unfortunately, Wayne, the eldest of the four Kerrigan kids, couldn't make it to the wedding. He's serving eight years in Pentridge Prison for armed robbery. Hopefully, he'll get early parole if he behaves himself. But let's talk about happier things, like Daryl's gorgeous greyhounds. His favourite is Coco. She's a real winner at the races. Then there's Daryl's other pride and joy. His boat, Sea Lady. He washes her every Saturday with another one of Steve's inventions, a hose with a brush attached. Steve gave it to Daryl on Father's Day, which is another sacred occasion in the Kerrigan household. Although most of Daryl's gifts end up displayed in the pool room, usually still in their packets. Three Highview Crescent really is a happy home, but trouble is brewing. One day in June, a council valuer shows up and asks to inspect the house. At first, Daryl is suspicious, but when the man says he just wants to value the property, Daryl gives him the grand tour. Soon after that, Sal mentions that their neighbour, Farouk, was also visited by a man from council. Daryl reckons that the market must be on the move and is excited to know how much his castle is worth. But the bombshell hits a few weeks later. A government authority called Airlink intends to acquire the property compulsorily. That means the Kerrigans are going to be kicked out of their home in return for $70,000 compensation. Their neighbours have also received the same letter. What the heck is going on around here? A short time later, Daryl goes to speak with someone at the local council. But the woman just repeats what Daryl already knows. The airport is expanding and his house is in the way. So... Airlink are going to take it, give Daryl a measly sum for it, then bulldoze it. This is all thanks to an ironclad agreement between the government and the airport's commission. But there's no agreement with Daryl Kerrigan, so they can all get stuffed. 
Since counsel are so unhelpful, Daryl goes to see his trusty lawyer, Dennis DeNuto. But Dennis isn't willing to take on such a big case. It was bad enough when he defended Wayne and he copped an eight-year sentence. The best Dennis can do is ring around and see what he can find out. The battle has only just begun, but Daryl stays positive. Dinner times are as cheerful as ever and the family's routines continue as normal. It's not long before Dennis calls with some good news. All Daryl has to do is appear at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, present his case, and Airlink will have to back off. Too easy. Now that everything's under control, Daryl plans a family trip to their favourite holiday spot, Bonnie Doon. They'll all go up on Friday after Tracy and Con return from their honeymoon in Thailand. When Friday comes around, the Kerrigans meet the newlyweds at the airport and walk them home. How convenient. Then they gather in the living room to hear about the trip and receive their fabulous presents. Then it's off to Bonnie Doon. Ah, the serenity. The fellas go fishing on the lake while the ladies enjoy some girl talk on the porch. This little getaway is exactly what the family needs because first thing on Monday morning, Daryl will face the tribunal. When Daryl makes his appearance, he states his case very clearly. You can't just take a man's house. He's not interested in compensation because you can't buy what Daryl's got. But the judge doesn't seem to get it and asks silly questions like what Daryl's case is in law. So, Daryl explains the justice of the matter so well that Farouk bursts into applause. Despite his best efforts, Daryl loses the case. But this just motivates him to fight harder. It's time to hit him with the big guns, a.k.a. Dennis DeNuto. But Dennis is still lacking confidence. He's discovered that Airlink is owned by a bunch of billionaires called the Barlow Group. These rich bullies are used to getting their way and have the government in their back pockets. They could expand the airport by filling in the quarry, but bulldozing houses is cheaper. Those scumbags. Daryl doesn't care how powerful these Barlow clowns are. He's ready to stand up to them. But he needs Dennis to stand with him. Come on, Dennis. That night, as the Kerrigans enjoy a quiet night in, Dennis DeNudo works late. He's decided to appear on Daryl's behalf in the federal court. Good on you, Dennis. A short time later, a slick city lawyer pays Dennis a visit. This guy works for Airlink and has received Dennis's letter. He tries to settle the matter by offering the Kerrigans an extra $25,000 in compensation. But there's a sinister undertone. He warns Dennis that if the Kerrigans reject the offer, things could get ugly. Even though 25 grand is serious cash, Daryl's got principles. That's why Sal loves him so much. He's not interested in the money, not bothered by threats, and instructs Dennis to reject the offer. Then, things get ugly. A hired thug shows up on the Kerrigan's doorstep to pass on a message. Take the money and shut up. Daryl orders the goon to leave, but he only does so when Steve brandishes a rifle he bought out of the trading post. Yikes. Later that night, someone smashes Steve's windshield. So Daryl and Steve drive across town to visit the palatial home of one of their opponents. Daryl delivers some stern words through the intercom. How dare they try to bulldoze people's houses? When Daryl and Steve are rebuffed, they keep their cool. How? By chaining the man's fancy iron gates to Daryl's tow truck and ripping them clean off. 
Of course, the police visit Daryl a few hours later to caution him for that little stunt. It's a good thing the policeman is on Daryl's side, although he'd better hide those iron gates. Since things are getting serious, Daryl checks in with his neighbours. Are they still keen to fight the compulsory acquisition? You bet they are. When their federal court date comes around, Dennis Denudo bravely defends his clients, although he does seem a little out of his depth. He argues that what Air Link are trying to do is against the Constitution, the supreme law of Australia. He then compares the case to Mabo, a famous Indigenous land rights case from 1992. Except Dennis can't explain exactly how the Constitution has been breached, nor can he say how the case relates to Mabo. It's more the vibe of the thing. Daryl is pleased with Dennis's efforts and is confident they've won. While he waits outside for the verdict, Daryl introduces himself to another bloke in the courtyard. His name is Lawrence Hamill, and he and Daryl hit it off. When Daryl shares details about his case, Lawrence, or Laurie, shows some concern. He also seems to know much more than he lets on. But their conversation is brief. Daryl must return to hear the judge's decision. And it comes as a huge shock. He's lost. What a kick in the guts. There are a lot of long faces around the dinner table that night. Daryl is unusually quiet until he shares the extra bad news. They must be out of the house in two weeks. But where will they go? This is what Daryl and Sal discuss as Daryl packs up the pool room. 70 grand doesn't buy you much in Melbourne, an apartment is out of the question, and the idea of renting is offensive to Daryl. All seems lost until a visitor shows up. It's Laurie Hamill. What's he doing here? It turns out that Laurie is a retired lawyer who used to specialise in constitutional law. He's heard about Daryl's loss in the federal court and has read into his case. In Laurie's expert opinion, Daryl has a real shot at an appeal. So, Laurie offers to come out of retirement and represent Daryl and his neighbours for free. You beauty! A few weeks later, Laurie... Daryl and Dennis rock up at the High Court in Canberra. It's all very intimidating, but Laurie's a pro. He offers a compelling argument that Air Link's acquisition of Daryl's home is not on just terms, a key phrase in the Constitution. But Air Link's lawyer is sharp too. He's suave and clever, but he's also mean. He insults Daryl's home and family to the point where Daryl tries to knock his block off. Cool it, Daz. During the break, Daryl apologises to Laurie and explains why his castle means so much to him. It's a humble place, but the people who live in it love each other and have made priceless memories there. It's not just a house, it's a home. To Daryl's delight, Laurie uses some of Daryl's words in his closing speech. The entire courtroom is glued to Laurie, like he's a champion greyhound blazing across the finish line. And guess what? Daryl wins the appeal. You little ripper! Outside the court, Laurie, Daryl and Dennis are swamped by the media. What a historic victory! It was Daryl versus Goliath. That night, it's a big party at the Kerrigan's and everyone is invited. Laurie and Dennis are there too and Daryl smiles all night. Six months later, Laurie comes out of retirement again to help Wayne get early parole. Hooray! The family is whole again. As for Dennis Denuto, 
His career has really taken off since the famous Kerrigan decision. Daryl and Laurie also remain close mates and often go fishing together at Bonnie Doon. And the good luck keeps rolling as the Kerrigan family welcomes some new members. Congrats to Steve, Tracy and Coco the Greyhound. Daryl finally finishes the extension and expands his tow truck business with Wayne's help. These days, you'll find Daryl sitting out on his brand new patio, contemplating his good fortune. Three Highview Crescent might not be a palace, but it's Daryl Kerrigan's castle. And a loving home is priceless, don't you think? Well, that's what Dale reckons, because this was his story. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.